It's time for us to take a look at the Nigerian newspapers. Let's see what the headlines are this morning. And uh, to make sense of all of this, I have with me in the studio Chartered Accountant and Public Affairs Analyst, Cheson Kwadi. Cheson, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning, you're welcome. Mike. Uh, thank God it's Friday. Exactly. Thank God it's Friday. But you're not looking Friday today, Yeah, there's, as usual. Uh, I have the a strategic oh, okay. this morning. <laughs> I like the word strategic. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's good. And I also have a strategic consultant, Dick Boy. Dick Boy, good morning. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Great. Now, let's... Uh, dig into this uh let's begin with this nigeria this nigeria says amid russian bombs global outrage fear grips nigerians in ukraine we hear bombs sounds of shells from our homes reps committee leads team to evacuate students and others today right that's uh, this nigeria of course we'll be looking at this i believe everyone's following the development in uh, between uh, in that region daily trust says ukraine crisis Twelve thousand students are the nigerians trapped uh, we're, we're living in fear students are saying and parents are worried federal government arranges special flight operation for evacuation in fact it was said that the national association of nigerian students in ukraine wrote a letter to the president in this regard calling for assistance Blueprint newspaper is next. As Russia-Ukraine crisis worsens, federal government prepares special flights to evacuate Nigerians and students there. NATO threatens retaliation. Putin warns on interference. All right. That's uh, the Blueprint newspaper. The Punch newspaper, Russia-Ukraine war, stranded Nigerians send SOS to, Ni to Buhari, demand evacuation. Federal government fails to provide timeline for evacuation as Ukraine shuts airspace. Experts slam government for delay as Nigerians in invaded nation rights Buhari. All right, that's the Punch newspaper. First news is next and it says Ukrainian invasion. Russia provokes world war. Oil price rises to $100 uh, per barrel. Uh, world leaders vow to defend Ukraine. Reps move to evacuate Nigerians from war-torn country. All right, that's uh, first, that's first uh, news. National economy is next and is talking about the same thing. Russia and Ukraine uh, crisis may strengthen Naira spike bread price. That's the dimension it's taking it from. Increase in oil production capacity will elongate gains for Nigeria. Experts are saying this. A global shortfall of wheat may worsen. You know, when crises like this come, people, you know, are pitching it from different perspectives of what is going to happen, who is going to benefit, who is not going to benefit. In fact, some are seeing arms deals across the world already. Uh, that's the national economy. <coughs> from there, let's go to the Guardian newspaper. Russia, Ukraine war distorts global markets all right russian ukraine war distorts global market and more subsidy for petrol as cooking gas may soar evacuate stranded nigerians reps or hanese lawyer tell federal government will do so once airports are opened federal government is responding to that okay that's uh, what uh, the guardian has in there all right let's go to daily times daily times I have no intention of staying beyond two terms, President Buhari is assuring Nigerians. Says leaders who swear by a holy book must not abuse public office. All right, the president was in Nasarawa State and uh, he made the statement there. From there, let's go to News Direct. Tinubu's presidential ambition, uh, you've done well for payback, Oni. Uh, Arumolara says uh, this. Uh, recall that uh, he was in Oshun State. In fact, he's still in Oshun State. I will move Nigeria from potential to reality. Tinubu vows. That's a news direct. Nigerian Tribune is next. Fresh uproar in APC over party chair. Right? That's what uh, the Tribune has. Leadership newspaper. APC national chairmanship is the focus here. Aspirants reject Adamu as a consensus candidate. All right, that's what the leadership is saying here. From there, let's go to Daily Sun 2023. Businessmen to buy form for Shibaju, MFL under pressure. 
Those insisting on zoning are lazy politicians. Kwangpaso is saying this. All right, that's uh, Daily Sun. From there, let's go to Daily Independent. 2023 election, new third force to receive APC PDP defectors after primary. All right, and then the nation newspaper lawmakers seek power to invite president and governors. Okay. The Vanguard newspaper, which is the last one we're seeing now, is saying that why military is reluctant to wipe out bandits, Governor Erufai is uh, talking there, right? Now, gentlemen, let's talk about this Russia-Ukrainian uh, issue. Uh, most of the papers today have this. And to talk about uh, how this impacts on Nigerians, Recall that the last few years, Nigerians, Nigerian students have made a mark in Ukrainian universities, yes. in medicine, in engineering. They've come out tops in, in fact, first class materials that Nigerians have made a statement in Ukraine. So, so we have a lot of parents saying, that, okay, if Nigerians are making that kind of mark, it means it seems there's something good there. Let's send, uh, you know, our, our children and our wards there. And we saw a spike in the number of Nigerian students in, in Russia, in Ukraine, Ukraine. you know. And uh, now we have them trapped due to this uh, issue now. Um, let me start with you, Dikbo, on this. Uh, th they've called for the president to send uh, an evacuation process or evacuation mechanism uh, for them. Yes, and um, for a lot of us who said this should have been done a couple of days ago, at okay. least a week ago, and now, um, the entire airspace is compromised because nobody wants to have any issues saying that there's a commercial airliner that has been shot down by either side. So um, in terms of having that evacuation done now, I'm not sure how plausible that will be, except they want to do ground evacuations, maybe to move them to maybe Moldova and then airlift them from there. But um, unfortunately, we're here now, still talking about it, that it hasn't been done. We're hoping that they can get the logistics right and have it done as soon as possible. Because either we like it or not, they are still Nigerians and their lives matter anywhere they are in the world. So yes, because they went to a particular country to study and then... Uh, so the writing has been on the wall for the last couple of weeks where a lot of nations were telling their citizens to evacuate. Um, some of them shut their embassies down, closed their consulates. And a lot of us were saying that, okay, you know what, these are first world countries. These are very deliberate countries. They are making statements like this. What's going on with Nigerians out there? We've been asking that question, what's going on with Nigerians? Uh, not just our citizens, um, Nigerian students, Nigerian business people, people who are just residents in Ukraine, who mm -hmm. are working in Ukraine. What is going on? What is the plan? And um, somehow the embassy there hasn't been quite, um, I don't know, maybe say quite pro progressive. Um, there was a statement we saw maybe yesterday or a couple of days ago where they were practically saying that people were on their own to stay put and hope for the best which for me is really not, it's really not good enough. Um, also, I believe that they should be able to leave the country by ground evacuation because as of yesterday, um, everybody that is a male between the ages of 18 to 60 has been conscripted. They've been distributing rifles to people to, to defend themselves. So um, I would like to assume that because they aren't um, indigents, they aren't citizens of Ukraine, that they'd be allowed to leave mm. and come back to their own country. But um, I think that we need to get this done now to get this done as soon as possible. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Shasan, the, the point there is a lot of persons are saying that the federal government should have done this evacuation process long before now. Uh, others are saying, well, no one knew that uh, there was going to be outright confrontation and invasion of, of the country by Russia uh, before yesterday. Well, what do you make of this, though? It states practically the nature at which we handle issue. We are always re reactionary. We are never proactive. You might say, like Dibbo said, uh, some of us are actually envisaging that possibly last week mm. we should expect some of these students in particular. Uh, and you go back to the reason. We have more of these students there. It's the failure of our educational system here. It started with one, two, three people just moving to Ukraine. Please, I have to, like, two family members before now who are back to the country. You study that, and I'm like, why do we have to travel this far? And they say, sir, you need to understand the nature of the uh, educational system in that area. Uh, we would not be singing this song if as our government has actually do what is needful about our education system. Uh, you bringing them back to the country, what do you expect them to do? 
these are people that have been taking their time to have good study and most of them that even you know study outside uh, the country how many of them do we get back to the country to add v value you discover that our system is really not working and the only thing that makes some of these uh, uh, people fall back is that after having the certificate it's not about who knows it is about merit and they get value for what they are doing but what do we get here even when you have that certificate and you are fixed up in a particular place the corruption level even in the system will make things work so and that's why we keep saying can we look for a way to make sure that the government do what is needful all the time so that we can save ourselves the stress of always requesting every day people are traveling if you are not if it's not to canada it's to uk mm -hmm. it's to ukraine in fact some people are going to strange country that till now you never heard the name but some of these people are putting the right system in place how many people have you heard that are coming into this country mm -hmm. like the way our people are going out of it i think there's a call except for businessmen who are coming to take advantage of the business uh, of course those ones you know we have we have everything we have the population yeah and we have, we have the those markets. we are we even have the manpower who have the skill mm -hmm. to deliver as possible so for the businessmen they will come go to uh muritala muhammadi airport if uh, a plane you know bait at any point in time 60 percent of them are foreigner mm -hmm. businessmen but for our students let's try and do something because education is the bedrock of any growth or development of a nation okay uh that's that's word there that's a point okay let's go on a break we'll be right back to uh, continue this uh, discussion stay with us on tvc breakfast we're looking at the headlines across nigerian newspapers today we'll be right back all right i tell you all the issues behind the camera uh, sometimes even more interesting sometimes but <laughs> they are for us alone not for you <laughs> all right you're watching tvc breakfast and we are looking at headlines across nigerian newspapers today the focus of most of the papers today are on the call for nigerians to be evacuated and returned from uh, ukraine because uh, some the, for some of the headlines use the word trapped because some of the airlines oh, sorry airports you know, uh, have been, airspace has been closed and uh, there has to be a way for uh, countries to, re, uh, you know, send back their citizens. I have with me Dick Boyewale as well as uh, Shesol Kwade in the studio and we've been making sense of this. Now, uh, Dick Boy, we also got reports that uh, some countries, some neighboring countries uh, are saying, okay, Nigeria, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to evacuate your people, is that can we collaborate you know so yes. that we can all bring back you know africans one way or the other yeah. how 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 beautiful is that or how how complex is that let me, let me ask um well i don't think that it's that complex it's just a matter of being able to synergize um information mm. and to be able to see how we can leverage on that goodwill and the relationship we have with different countries mm. across the entire region i mean so for countries to offer by themselves that we're willing to do this for you is something that i think is quite admirable and it could also be to the credit of the nigerians in those countries as well mm. so we need to also recognize that fact and emphasize it as well mm. so that being said i believe that it's something that we need to get done and get done aggressively like i said um the evacuation will very likely have to be a land evacuation first moving um, nigerian citizens out of ukraine into neighboring countries and see how we can elevate them from there mm. but i think that it is something that it's not it's not very complicated really um mm. there's no reason why the embassy in ukraine can't be cooperative why they can't be worked with um i believe the embassy staff will still be in country and they should be able to be of immense help liaising with the foreign ministry back here in nigeria mm -hmm. and mm. see how they can also connect with the embassy in those neighboring countries mm. say okay depending on where you are in Ukraine, because their landmass is very massive. Yeah, yeah. it's massive. So, yeah, so you can always break the country down into different zones or different corridors, saying that, okay, from this corridor to this corridor, move to Moldova, from this corridor to this corridor, move to this other nation. Of course, though, you can't say you're moving to Belarus. Mm. <laughs> 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 you can't move to Belarus, but you can also move to this nation and this nation, mm. and then we can see how we can synergize um, flights to pick them up from there. Mm. Or see, maybe if you don't have a full a full load from maybe Moldova, you can pick them up 
somewhere else and mm. yeah so it's it's not it's really not that complicated all right. but we just have to be very serious about it and we have to be very quick about it okay because things are moving very quickly all right now with the move from the uh, national assembly as well as nigerians calling uh we understand that the ministry of foreign affairs is mm. working with the embassy there and they've been told in ukraine to try to coordinate nigerians knowing how many nigerians do we have here who are willing to go back home because at times like this you might find some nigerians who feel well I am like the, I'm a landlord here. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't worry, you guys can go. I'm, I'm going uh, to stay. Well, we have, we're certainly going to have issues like yeah, that. I was, I was even about to react uh -huh. to that, that this issue of we saying you want to come and, and evacuate us. I'm sure it's very few, maybe the student. If you look at the kind of life these people live out there, they won't mind. You want to bring them back to the country where, as we speak, as is currently on strike, you want to bring them back to a country where insecurity pervades. Even those of us here are not having that rest of mind that we can guarantee that things are... I, well, maybe very few parents that are actually panicking. But I, I can tell you for free that there will be some people that say, don't worry, even in the midst of this war, yeah. we will stay here. Because <laughs> at least there is hope, there is guarantee that things, maybe after a while, these countries are able to uh, you know, filter out things within themselves or even go to neighboring countries. Mm depending when yes. those problems will come. But I don't think average of them want to come back to this country because there's nothing that they are going to fall back Well, the, the point there is, in, in a situation of a war, n nothing is guaranteed. Mm. And th there's so much uncertainty. You don't yes. know yeah. what is going to happen. Yes. So whatever move you want to make, it is best to move it, make it now. Yes. And, and I like the way the Ministry of Foreign Affairs put it, like those who are willing, yes. willing exactly. to leave. It's, it's not compulsory. If you don't it's want to leave, it's still okay. Uh -huh. But if, you, if you're willing to leave, we'll make this available for you to leave so you can come home and uh, rest for a little while. Well, before Mike, I feel this should have been done earlier. Yeah, you said make so. this information available right. uh, so that... We can quickly, rather than now that you've shot, they've shot the year space mm. and nothing is happening, and we are making it's going to cost more, more to get, like he said, it's going exactly. to cost more to get organized Nigerians, transport them by bus or by whatever Wherever thing to is the to a neighboring to country so they can use the airport there if they have to. It's going to cost more. But let, let's let me stay with you, uh, uh, uh in the area of um. The Naira here, if you see the national economy, uh, it was seeing this thing from a different perspective. Like, oh, okay, they, there's this crisis there. So that crisis might uh, strengthen the Naira one way or the other because of the increase in uh, uh, oil, crude oil price. What do you make of this, though? Yeah, in the midst of uh, calamity, there are always opportunities for people to tap into. Mm. And uh, strengthening our currency, you, you know the current rate we've moved as much as $100 per barrel mm -hmm. for this crude oil. But for me, I, I don't consider that as a positive thing. Yeah. In the sense that the crude oil will send it. The cost at which you bring it back to this country creates more hardship, even for us as a t citizen. It would have been better if we have our refineries functioning. Mm. In fact, it will be, it, it will be a mind-blowing thing that even people that are currently in Ukraine will join the next available flight to come to the country. Mm. But the spike in the increase of uh, the price of crude oil is actually a problem to the nation because the more it goes up, the most the cost of landing. Are you aware that currently the cost of petrol in filling station has increased from the 162 to about 173, 185 as we speak? And it's not that they are selling at black market. Mm -hmm. It's conspicuously written there. I was sure you know, be, before now I hardly pay attention to those things. I just get there as they fill mm -hmm. my time. You just assume. No, you just you assume. Know, yeah. but, but yesterday I just entered and I looked at it. Ah, I said 175. He said yes. Ah, mm -hmm. You didn't even inform us. So you have seen that even the crisis we had with the adulterated for the resultant effect of it is that to increase the price the other time i was uh, here on a particular issue and somebody was mentioned that she bought it you know at the filling station for 185 and well i think it's good at least we are not stressing to get it mm. that is part of the problem we are faced with because the higher the cost of this a crude oil at the uh, global market, mm -hmm. the more problematic it is for yeah, us for because us. we are not processing it. Because oil is a global product. Of course. Yes. So, so we face it because since we're buying and importing, we're, we're facing the same thing any other country any other doesn't have oil. Of course. You know, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't it. Yeah. And in fact, the disheartening thing there is that the byproduct that you get from some of those things is a gain to the country that are buying those products. But for us, nothing to gain. The bitumen, the gel, and all other 
byproduct. They are just uh, free for them. The only thing we bring back to ourselves is uh, maybe the PMS and uh, this mm. thing. So to me, it's not something to celebrate. Mm. Okay. Even if it's strengthened, it's, we have other way where we we'll pay it out. Oh, okay. Now, deeper the, the way forward on this, the point there is, what lessons do we have to learn from situations like this? Nigeria, leading African countries, being uh, the giant of Africa, should always have uh, a stand regarding all of these things. Uh, it is assumed that we should have a, a, a stand and be decisive the moment uh, we, anything like this comes up. Oh, well... Um I may talk in the ideals, but in, in practical reality, mm -hmm. I, don't, um, I don't see how we'll be leading as much. Uh, because the first question I'll ask you is, what are our key foreign policies? Mm -hmm. Whatever we're seeing today happen between Russia and Ukraine is a matter of personal interest on either and both sides, mm -hmm. even from the U.S. and the NATO bit mm -hmm. of it. Remember it's Israel, Israel and interest. Palestine too. Yes, so it's, it's a matter of personal interest. And what we're seeing being expressed is the foreign policy of a particular nation mm. yeah. that unfortunately is coming off in a very aggressive manner yeah. and some people have to bear the brunt of it. So the question is, what is our own foreign policy? But for me, I would say that it's very important that as a nation of Nigeria, the most populous black nation on the planet, mm. that we're able to see how we can strategically position ourselves to be nations of, right. of relevance. Okay. We have to leave you here now. Um, at least the much we know, Africa still remains the centerpiece of Nigerian foreign policy. Uh, mm. That hasn't changed except if it has been modified, but that's the much we know. So let's leave you here. Thank you so much, uh, Dipo Yewale, for coming on the program. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. And uh, Shason Kwadi, thank you very much for coming. Lovely weekend. Thank you, and lovely weekend too. Thanks. Yeah.